Again, thank you for tuning in to Healing for Your Soul's Deliverance Ministries. I am Prophetess Permissa Acoff, and I would like to thank you again for tuning in. Today, we're going to be talking about the firstborn among many brethren. I'm not going to read the entire scripture that we're going to be talking about for time's sake, but I would recommend that you go back and you read it. And it's coming out of Romans 8, verses 28 through 39. And it's really going to hit home in terms of us understanding who we are in Christ and really, really seeking after him to explain who we are and who he is. So I'm going to go ahead and read this particular text of scripture and then we're going to talk about it. This particular text of scripture is Romans 8 verses 29 and it says, For whom he did foreknow, he also de did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. What does that mean to you? Firstborn among many brethren. I know a lot of us who are in ministry understand that we're called and that we're called to look a certain way and that way is Christ. We're called to follow his example and a lot of times it doesn't look like the example or it doesn't look like the characteristics that some may think that Christ looks like. So we become the firstborn among many brethren. A lot of times when you ask the children of God who do they believe that they are in Christ? What's their assignment? A lot of times they can't tell you that. And so if you don't know who you are, then you'll just go along with anything in terms of char character, integrity, thought process. And we as children of God, we don't want anyone to live their lives that way. You have to understand that he has a purpose for you and it's a divinely inspired purpose that you weren't sent here haphazardly, that you're not a mistake, that he has a purpose for you. And in that purpose is your joy, it is your peace, it is your obedience, it is your faith, it's everything that we're taught that we need to have in him. I know a lot of times people think that because they're engaged in certain behavior, then how can they be redeemed? How can they be reconciled to Christ? We have to understand that Christ already accomplished that in his blood, in his sacrifice on the cross, and also the resurrection, which gives us our victory into life and life more abundantly. I would encourage you guys to really, really consider who you are in Christ, and then allowing His Spirit to direct you in this Word in terms of how that individual looks in Christ. Not what men think, and not what you think yourself, but who does the Lord say that you are? And who do you say that He is? It's only by His Spirit that we're able to have the things that we hear preached to us so many times. Faith and compassion and love and, and truth and justice. Those are not things that we have to go after and try to accomplish for ourselves. Those are only actualized in Jesus. He gives us that ability. I know for me, as someone who is called into ministry, I had to believe that God was for me. And that if God be for me, who could be against me? If you go back and you read that particular text of scripture, Romans 8, verses 28 through 39, you'll see that all things work together for your good. And that nothing shall separate you from, from the love of God in Christ Jesus. That you have a purpose in, purpose in him. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care what someone has told you is sin or not sin or something that's not pleasing. You have to know him for yourself. A lot of things that we're calling sin, a lot of things that we're calling wickedness and evil, we really have to allow the Spirit of the Lord to minister to us the root causes of those things so that we can not only forgive ourselves, but forgive other people. That we can not only have compassion for ourselves, but that we can have compassion for other people. You have a purpose in God, and I don't care what someone says, I don't care how someone has judged you or critiqued you, I don't care how you've judged and critiqued yourself, you have a purpose in Him, and you are the firstborn among many brethren. There is a uniqueness in you that only you can do, like there is a uniqueness in me. No one can do permissa or be permissa better than permissa. And all of the roles that he has designed for Permissa, no one could be the mother like Permissa, the wife like Permissa, the minister like Permissa, because that was given to me by my Savior. He designed a uniqueness for me that no one else can take. No matter what I've done or what people consider I've done or what I will do, he paid the price for me. 
so I can rest assured and rest in the perfection that I take on when I believe his word. All of the things that we hear like faith and hope, those are just not arbitrary concepts. They are what he already has placed in us in the assignment that he's given us. So when you know who you are, you have those things already inside of you. You don't have to try to get faith. Faith is. You don't have to try to get obedience. Obedience is. You don't have to try to get love. Love is. Because what you're doing is you're taking on him and you're believing him in terms of who he says you are and who he says he is independently of what the world says independently of what people say so I want you guys to be encouraged and go back and read this information and know that you have a special place in him and it's only designed and orchestrated by him go back and get into this word allow the spirit of God to minister to you and know that you are the firstborn among many brethren doesn't matter what someone says in a church doesn't matter what someone says in your family doesn't matter how someone is judging you or critiquing you doesn't matter what you've done or where you think you what you think you've done or how far you think that you're from Christ he says that if anyone calls on the name of the Lord they shall be saved you can find that in Romans 10 and for those who are feeling guilty or feeling condemned or feeling like their behavior is so far above him loving them check out Romans 10 because we all have done things that the world might view as sin or other people might view as sin or we might view, view as sin, but God paid the price for that in his son, Christ Jesus. He paid the price for that. God loves us. And so be encouraged that you are the firstborn among many brethren. And always remember that you can live this word in him in peace according to who he's called you to be and can't no one judge it can anyone could critique it and can anyone be it the devil can't steal it and people can't judge it so understand God loves you until next time I want you to be blessed and remember to watch your mouth